All right, welcome, welcome everyone. There's uh, participants popping in the room in our VIP Zoom room. Uh, if you're listening to this recording, buckle up. Welcome. We're going to be talking about marketing meets blockchain with Eric Skeldon. And just a little heads up for you, Eric. <laughs> say hi, Eric. Er Eric's going to be uh, hosting an, an extraordinary challenge session right after this. So pay attention to the Facebook group that we're going to be highlighting today, and we'll be able to, to help you jump in. Today's June 9th. We're rocking and rolling. But this concept and this topic is going to be uh, really something you want to pay attention to for the next 10 years. So no matter when you're listening to this, like just pay really close attention to the principles and concepts that Eric's going to be presenting with us. I'm going to be helping a little bit, but Eric, let's take it away, man. Let's talk about marketing and blockchain and cryptocurrency and NFTs and gosh, Web3. I mean, there's so many terms coming out of the blockchain. This is going to be fun. Yeah. First of all, uh, welcome. Or, and I'm, I'm, I'm Bill. Welcome here. And Giver Marketing Network, you guys are amazing. I love the whole principle of just giving and even, um, you know, the giver or the go-giver and a lot of the stuff that Timothy does in here, just really sharing so much value. So it's amazing. Well, tell us a little bit about your, uh, the, the group that, that's really thousands of people in this group were impact. I mean, Kingdom Warriors is impacting so many different um, industries, but specifically like Hollywood, creatives, media. Tell us a little bit more about this group and, and make sure and pay attention to the link on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so this group, you know, kind of arose really um, in November. The idea really happened just in November of last year. And this group is really just of creators, innovators, um, and even, I mean, investors, people who want to get in the crypto NFT space, kind of coming together to, um, you know, really a lot of just build amazing stuff together, um, be a part of collaborative projects, um, which, you know, Kingdom Wars, we're doing multiple things, like everything from a book, um, kind of a collaborative book um, and game, a video game where you can earn cryptocurrency through the video game. And also we're creating a movie. And so it's really just um, been cool to see people from even Sony, Disney and Marvel. You've connected us with the artists from Sony that actually became our lead artist. And it's just been really cool to see um, the talent who has came that have been working for the big companies like Sony, Disney, and Marvel, and really the seeing the potential on Web3 and um, the blockchain and what we could build on the blockchain. And um, yeah, just create a good brand that you can get out to the marketplace. And um, it's been cool just to see where it's now in 81 nations, really just a lot of people are just getting on fire for what is possible with the yep. blockchain. With Web3. Shout out to Nick Burgess, Michael Morgan, many of the other artists that are part of the kind of the greater kingdom network, if you will. And Kingdom Warriors is legit. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to definitely pay attention to that. Jump in, jump into this right after this session. I mean, there's literally a, a live session back to back. Eric's, Eric's, this is kind of a bonus session, a pre-session, if you will. So this is super fun. All right, Eric, tell us a little bit of your story, man. Let's, let's, let's pop through some slides and visuals and let's tell us what's your journey been like? What, what is, how did you get here? Yeah, so how did I get to, yeah, the blockchain, you know, working in an international blockchain company? I, I ask my, I wake up sometimes, I'm like, was that, is it real? Do we really run this like internet blockchain company? And I'm like, just so grateful. But, you know, it really started, I think, with just a love for technology and innovation. And, I've you know, as a kid, I've always loved like Spider-Man, Iron Man, a lot of like the geeky, smart, like, you know, Spider-Man. If you look on like, I used to have those uh, Marvel like en encyclopedia that had like Thanos was really smart um, on, the, on like they had all their skill factors, you know, their giftings and the giftings for like Spider-Man, Iron Man and Thanos were like intelligent, or, like level, you know, 10, like. And so I really always loved those kind of nerdy, you know, I, I always felt kind of like an outcast, um, you know, struggled in school, actually, with, um, you know, said that I had ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, all this stuff. But I kind of always knew I had this creative genius inside. I just didn't know where it was resting how to activate it. I just like there was sometimes when I, I saw it in on display, but sometimes I just, you know, I was like, oh, well, I'm kind of just a class clown, you know, that I like, I, I, I became just a class clown because I wasn't good at school, but I, I can make people laugh and just, you know, just have fun and stuff. And anyways, you know, I went, I went and still, um, I got a scholarship in cheerleading, surprisingly. And then, um, you know, throughout cheerleading really just saw like the, uh, the potential even of, 
what you could do with like doing flips. I used to do crazy flips and like do like stunts, these stunts. And I was just like, always on about potential. Like, what can we build? What can we do? That's like, kind of like pushing the limits, pushing the boundaries. And so in cheerleading, you know, we did that um, in Texas and then when got a business degree at University of North Texas and um, the military paid for it. And, um, and I ended up um, in the Texas Army National Guard as Army paratrooper. Um, so I was on a six year contract with that while get, attaining my business degree. And, you know, before that, I, I flunked out of math three times um, just because, I, you know, I think just like kind of the switching like negative versus positive or, you know, like Y equals MX plus B, some of those like equations, I would mix it up and then I would end up just and then I get demotivated and I would just not pass. But I finally after flunking out of uh, while well, I was a college cheerleader, I flunked out of math three times and then ended up ended up um, the military actually exempt me from remedial math so I got into regular math at the university just went straight into the university with everything in, with my associates except for math and then ended up um, getting yeah just getting with some prior service army people when we passed first time and ever since then I was able to focus on like international marketing um, I was able to take courses uh, I had I was getting a minor in marketing and like take courses on entrepreneurship business management you know, different management techniques and styles. And I really enjoyed that kind of stuff, like companies and growth and scaling. And I just studied everything I could about entrepreneurship. Uh, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was, you know, 17, 18, um, did some entrepreneurial things throughout college that I was really kind of good at and just found out I had a really good nick for sales and marketing and just, you know, anyways, long story short. Um, yeah, I was in, had a marketing agency and, and was in here in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and I was doing some consulting. I also did um, millions in sales in um, in the freight and shipping world, and so and then before that, I was in tech technology sales, selling GPS like for trucks, like you know all the, the fleets, like fleet tracking software and stuff. So that's where I kind of got into technology before I got into the shipping industry. So it kind of was in the corporate America after getting a business degree, it proven myself like of my sales ability, being able to you know even, you know, be on a sales team, you know, be kind of, a, and every sales team I was on, I was kind of like the rising star um, that was just kind of dominating. And so I knew I was good at that. And then, and then I finally, I was like, man, why am I making, you know, all this revenue for other companies? Like I need to figure out how to make revenue for my own company. And I, you know, had the, you know, but I felt like it was good to prove yourself in the corporate world first before doing your own company. So I think it was good timing, but anyways, I was doing some consulting and I just got into the NFT space. Um, I started thinking about it a year ago in May. Um, I turned 30 last May and then I, I kind of like, I bought some NFT domains, which is actually one of the domains that is like going to, um, going to this group now. And then, and then like a few months later, I just, me and a friend were just like, Hey, let's start investing in some uh, NFTs. And like my friend gave me like four grand to like start investing for him. Cause he's like, you're really good at this, like whatever. And so he gave me four grand to start investing. I started investing, buying and flipping NFTs. I bought some NFTs for like $200 and sold them for like five grand. And like there, you get these NFTs reveal and you're part of the whole launch. And there's a whole bunch of people all around the world during when you're in these NFT launches. So you're like, feel like it's Christmas and everyone's excited to open up their NFT. And it's like a present. It's a brave so new it just, world, isn't it? It's just a really interesting world. And you ended up yeah, it's like, jumping into it, like investing, like you put your money where your mouth was, like you were doing it, right? Yeah. So yeah, we, we, I, we probably bought and sold, you know, 20 to 30 grand worth of NFTs. And I was just like, man, like, and then I just really, as I was there, I just kept asking questions using kind of my marketing gifting and stuff to even help other projects with solutions. And here's how you can get your NFT project out there more. And, you know, and even thinking about the community aspect, because every one of these NFT projects were about a community and I really liked that. And then they, they usually gave to charity, which I really like that. So it was like art, charity, and community. And I was like, I really like this whole vibe of what these people are doing in this community. And I really found the heart for him. And then, um, yeah, I just got this idea of Kingdom Warriors. And hey, they're kind of, you know, the whole, I looked at the canvas of the landscape and, you know, my consulting kind of marketing background was like, man, I see a solution. I see a hole that, a void that needs to be filled. Yep. And I just wrote down a plan and, you know, I got it funded and uh, found some amazing people who wanted, were passionate about it. And seven months later, here we are. Awesome. Thanks for sharing your story, Eric. Uh, I know people want to know kind of the man behind the project and, and some of the people and the leadership behind the project. And you are the, the one of the co-founders of Kingdom Warriors. 
you're kind of the, the, the main visionary behind what's happening. So thanks for sharing that. Appreciate that. Let's dive in, man. Let's talk about some, some definitions, maybe get, uh, we have people in the chat box lighting it up or saying, hey, what's blockchain? What's, what's, what's this NFT thing you just mentioned? Like, can you give us some, just some basic high level, not like Webster's Dictionary. I'm not, you, everybody can look that up. Like, that's not, that's fine. But what, what is a blockchain in, like in your mind, just from your perspective? Yeah, so the blockchain is really just like a international um, ledger, distributed ledger system. And it is a, it's a place where you basically can post information, store information, but it's more like, it's more decentralized. So it's not Facebook whole, aggregating all the data, Twitter aggregating all the data. It's a blockchain where you can store, like I store our NFTs on the blockchain and it has a, and then I set a value to them. And then the, mar the, commu the market proves the value and everything's, everything's uh, transparent where they can see who owns it. So it's a way that you can have ownership um, on the you know proof of value that's on the blockchain. So it's really just, um, it's a whole bunch of code um, on the blockchain that is uh, that is there for creators to create, you know, applications on decentralized applications. So um, are you telling me that it's like a new technology, Eric, where there's no government, no bank, no corporation that is actually controlling, like puppet stringing this whole thing? Like that, there's no, no. They want no. to, and that's what they're. It, it's in the process where there's they're kind of getting afraid because it is getting reaching some more mass adoption. I would say there's still less than five, 10% that are adopted, but because even once you start getting to 10%, it's like, hey, like there people are moving their money from the banks and the traditional systems and seeing that the blockchain is better for we the people. And so they're like, mm -hmm. well, so they're getting afraid of it, but um, you really can't stop it because it's um, because Bitcoin and Ethereum are just have already proved themselves for enough time. You know, I think Bitcoin was like 2009. And so you, it's it's basically opened up Pandora's box on the blockchain, and it's unstoppable. There, are people are creating video games on the blockchain. They're creating ways for you to get paid to do things that you were doing. You were basically spending your time on Facebook and other places. There's going to be ways you can get paid to get on social media, paid to play the Candy Crush game that people just spend hours playing. You're going to eventually be able to get paid to play Fortnite, and your kids are, you know, playing Fortnite, spending V bucks, spending hundreds of dollars a month. And eventually they're going to be able to find out you can get paid to play that game. And they're like, what? Like, why was I paying to play when they would pay me to play? We got some uh, comments happening in the chat box. Let's, let's talk about the industries, you know, maybe a handful of industries that are going to be greatly affected by blockchain or already have been. Okay. So you're, 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 you're zeroed in on the media and the, and the movie and the entertainment and the creative space for kingdom warriors. But there's also like, education like Herdy Burke just mentioned in the chat box there's fun, nice. just finance any kind of insurance or finance products at all uh even mm -hmm. people are purchasing their mortgages now on blockchain like so some of the stuff coming down the pipeline on just the traditional finance like yeah uh, is oh real estate and finance revolutionary. Oh so like fintech yeah. fin as far as investors and people like vc they're looking for fintech products. They're looking for uh, games, play to earn games. They're looking for, inv and these are like what they're looking into invest in. They're also like, so financial technology that is gonna be on the blockchain, the way you, like you said, the way you go to your title company, real estate, you know, I came from also flipping like 20 real estate contracts and working with title companies. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna revolutionize title companies and proof of title because everything is, is there. Like, oh, Timothy had the house. And there was this much debt on it or whatever. And then he, you know, paid it off and this person bought it. Now this person has it. It's going to be able to show the, you know, clean bill of title through, yep. through that. I mean, so much solutions for people, whether in real estate, whether in restaurants. Just blows my mind. Just blow. Cause now we have the third parties, like the, the notaries and the title companies and the banks that are involved. Like it's all going to be automated on this tech new technology that is so revolutionary. I oftentimes maybe you do as well, Eric, kind of equate it to like when the internet first came on the scene or when social media first took off or shoot, some people are even saying it's going to be as big as like when electricity came on the scene, like, whoa, okay. I don't know about that, but like, it's super, yeah. super interesting and in how it's affecting multiple arenas. Like every one of our industries that we're in, everybody listening, it's going, blockchain will affect your career, your profession, your 
industry. It will affect, it, it's already affecting marketing. I mean, we're having a masterclass about it for crying out loud. I mean, think about that. Like, why would we take the time to do this? Because it's affecting everything, especially around the creative space. So, all right, let's rock and roll, man. That's blockchain. There's NFTs. You've mentioned Bitcoin, Ethereum. We're going to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum in a few minutes and some of those other like common, you know, aspects of, of coins and which is only one part of the blockchain. It's just one piece of it, but it's a big one. So, all right. So let's talk about specifically marketing. You, you have a marketing background. We obviously have a marketing network. That's why we hang out and have a lot of fun together. Um, what, how would I apply? I mean, what, what is this even, what does it matter to marketing? Yeah. So I think it, as far as like in marketing in general, it, 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 it matters. It does like, if you're like an agency, you can obviously learn this skill and then help other creators because like, I mean, Gary V is a part of NFTs, Tom Brady, the goat part of NFTs uh, has an NFT company for sports. So it, it's going to affect all forms of marketing and branding, but it's and eventually, and, but it's going to start with, um, I mean, every celebrity needs an NFT, every, um, you know, big brand needs an NFT project or NFT collection, and they will. Adidas has one. Um, shoe companies are getting them. Um, Board Yacht Ape Club is like a billion dollar um, brand now in one year. This has already became a, a billion dollar brand. And they are, are now licensing their NFTs to other companies and brands because each NFT part of their collection is worth oh, like 300 grand or more um, in value. And this is like real, like you can cast that out value, 300 grand. And they bu were bought for like 200, 300 dollars. So if anyone, if any math experts want to find the ROI on 300 dollars to 300 grand. Um, so, anyways, you the way the way it's gonna like for instance right there like this was a concept art we kind of saw like it's gonna be these knights it's gonna be these warriors and so for me I wanted to start this company but how do I how do I raise funds how do I get people a part of it so throughout NFTs we sold 300 NFTs then we sold 2,222 NFTs then we sold out and now we've raised um, over four hundred thousand dollars for all of our creative media and our startup. And I had to go to no banks, no VCs. All I did was prove the concept to the people and then raise um, over 400 grand. And that's in seven months. If I wanted to do that to market a brand and, you know, in the, I would have had to, I probably would have been pitching this idea for, you know, maybe it could have been seven months just to pitch the idea just for someone to put 50 grand in or a hundred grand in. Yeah, there's some questions coming yeah, to the chat around. box. And what we'll do with that particular question, uh, Herdy and others who are asking, is we will have a time of Q&A and that's a really good question, by the way. So let's not forget that one um, as we come to the Q&A in a few minutes. Really good question. Uh, marketing, man. Uh, yeah, I, I think when it comes right down to it, like for example, um, I've run into more and more companies that are actually tokenizing their company. They're actually yeah, that's creating the blockchain. A, they're tokenizing. Yeah, they're, so yeah the, another, key, another key term to look up, ladies and gentlemen, tokenize. Like how do I tokenize my company? And that includes marketing companies, right? So like we're looking, I was looking at Polygon here recently, getting some consultation on getting a, uh, another keyword, Polygon, might want to look it up. I'm just saying to get a giver token, giver marketing network token. And I know Eric, the Kingdom, the Kingdom Warriors are looking into what's the best, you know, platform, you know, blockchain to kind of make sure that the token's done right. And we're looking into different things on that, just working together on that. But bottom line is this, Whatever, if you have a brand, whether it's a personal brand or a company brand, look into tokenization. It's a way to monetize your efforts outside of the traditional system. And you, you are viewed as an innovator, as someone in the know on technology, because you're going to dig deep into it. And you're going to go into, end up going in the rabbit hole and learning a bunch of stuff. So it's going to be super fun. Trust me. I remember buying Bitcoin in 20. I don't remember when it was 2014 at 400 bucks a pop. Like you start digging in, you start putting a little bit of money in, right, Eric? Like when you were doing with NFTs, yeah. you start. And your mind starts expanding money. and getting blown. Yeah. yeah, your mind will just. I think you have to get, you guys are in the right place. You have to get your hands and feet dirty. Like it's not just in one hour masterclass, you're not going to learn everything about the blockchain because we don't even know everything about the blockchain. The people who invented the blockchain don't even know everything that's going to be created on the blockchain. It's basically like this, like, amazing platform that you're able to build on top of and just do amazing stuff on top of that is better for the people 
versus you know the global and you know big banks and elite and so really for the average person which are marketing people you know marketing consumers this is this is going to just change their lives and so i think as far as uh, marketing like and you i think yeah you just you have to get in some of these discords and you like youtube what is blockchain start getting the visualization that's what i started i just started youtube and everything about nfts blockchain crypto and and just learning and just like you know and it you'll you're literally well, your mind will just be expanded and then once you once it clicks it eventually will click for you everyone everyone that's been a part of our events and just um just in and even that i talked to have like learned enough they're like dude this is like once it clicks it's like wow like this is amazing literally game changer for yeah uh, okay all right enough uh, enough about just just that particular aspect of of the blockchain but i did want to you know make sure we move along go maybe go to the next slide and talk about some other things that are are related so what's coming next eric skeldon you're a visionary um i got a little bit of that in me as well let's talk about this like what's coming next um, we talked a little bit about real estate and you know, different industries that are going to be affected in general, but what, what's coming next for Kingdom Warriors, for art, for media, for Hollywood, for like, share with us, like your heartbeat, like what, what's coming next? Yeah. So really the future and, you know, what, what we're seeing is, you know, the way that you do films is you need to like write a script, get a studio to approve it. Then they want control over your film and then they want to, um, you know, they want to, you know, distribute it. They get 50% of all the profits because they're the big name and big brand, Warner Brothers, you know, Paramount, Lionsgate, all these big studio brands. But now it's coming to a time where, you know, we've already just now raised over or basically 150,000 for our first film within our holders, within our um, people. And then they're going to be sharing in on the profits. They're going to be getting valuable props. They're going to be in the film. So like this is decentralized entertainment where, the people are a part of the film. They're helping to connect, you know, hey, connect this person. And then their NFTs and profit goes up as the project and the film goes up. And it proves your audience before, you know, like 80% of the films that come out fail. So this um, blockchain allows you to prove your concept with the film because the people who are funding it, they're basically saying, yes, I already want to see that before it happens. You oh, know, wow. So, so, it's, so like, it's like a technology meets funding uh, approach or method to accomplish something that may have taken a lot more effort, time, money, res you know, all different resources in the legacy model, like kind of the traditional yeah. model. So this is the, the next model for publish publishing, distributing, creating, anything that's of value, correct? Is that what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, correct. Anything that you think that is going to be of value, whether it's, hey, I want to build the net next Netflix, a decentralized, you know, uh, where you get paid to watch Netflix, you know, how many people in the room would watch enough Netflix to like, yeah, someone should be paying me to be on that platform. There's going to be places where you're going to watch enough Netflix to where it's, you know, uh, Bitcoin flicks and you're getting paid Bitcoin to watch Netflix, you know, like th th that's what's coming. Everything, everything's going to become decentralized and there's going to, obviously there's going to be regulations coming there's going to be governments wanting more control and taxes. But so that you can expect that to come, but you're also going to expect a lot of innovation that is better for the consumer, which is the end user for most places that just take your data, they take all your stuff, they sell it to other people, and they you don't even know that it's happening versus now you have more ownership, you have more, you have a wallet connected. So the, the big thing is in the blockchain, your wallet is connected. And so they know that your wallet is connected and your basically your code on the blockchain is getting paid or is getting some sort of benefits when you um, are are basically positioned or working with these different decentralized blockchain yep. things. We have team members that won't get paid in regular you know currency anymore. They it's cheaper to send payment through some you know an application that's leveraging blockchain technology. I can send people Bitcoin right now through Strike for zero fees literally zero fees wow. and, the, and there's other ones uh, built on ethereum we'll, we'll talk about that in a second but I, i'm just saying like what's coming next is like woo, wow i didn't realize i could do yeah. that without a bank or without a this or without a government or without a this like it's kind of libertarian in its in its foundations mm -hmm. but it's starting to form into this larger movement right so super fun all right let's let's see what do we got next eric I, i'm just i want to pick your brain on some stuff what the heck 
what is this? This is the what's the risk of doing nothing. And um, you see, these are companies that are started this year or, or, or is it, or what is it? Is it one of the top? Looks like a time progression of when they adopted blockchain as a part of their oh, okay. business when they model. Adopted. Wow. Yeah. I was looking at this earlier. I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize so many of these brands and companies were adopting blockchain technology so early. And it tells me, I mean, it tells us what, Eric? What does this tell us? Well, you know, obviously Microsoft, I mean, Bill Gates is like one in Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey who owns Twitter, the owner of Facebook, the owner of, they're literally going all in on blockchain. I'm talking about billions of dollars. These are like the people who know what is going to be the trillion dollar industry and guess where they're pouring billions is in the blockchain, into the metaverse, into um, basically ways where the consumer gets paid. And they're obviously positioned very well because they have, you know, the billions of consumers data where they can create something on the blockchain. And so, and obviously some people will say, oh, well, that's where they're trying to go. So we want to stay away from it. But I say, if they, if that is where the, the future is, if that is where the kids are going to be, if that's where my children and other people's children, that's where the future is going to be. We want to create territory there. We want to take space there. And so that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking space and we're growing it. And we, and we say there's going to be, we just believe that there's going to be room for everyone to play on this playground of the blockchain. And um, you got to start building, you got to start figuring this stuff out, start learning the foundations and seeing, you're not going to just build a blockchain company overnight. Uh, you have to learn the foundations, you know, like I, I, like he said, uh, Timothy bought Bitcoin and was getting into crypto back in, you know, 20 uh, early, you know, early 2000, whatever, past 10. And I, I got in in like 2018. So that was four or was it 2018? Was it? Yeah. Four years ago, I was really getting into Bitcoin and crypto and um, and yeah, and I, I remember just passing up on Bitcoin. I used to see people trying to sell it on Twitter for like, you know, super cheap. And I was like, and I remember passing it up in 2015, 2014, like, you know, the 2013s. And I wish I would have gotten a part of it. And, you know, I got in in 18 and, you know, I've just been in crypto. And then the NFT industries, you know, the past years is growing. More brands are getting on NFTs. But blockchain is not going anywhere. You can, that's what you can see from this. And um, if you look at Blockbuster versus Netflix, you know, you want hey. to, the future is going to be on the blockchain. That's a good point. Good point. Hey, let's talk about an elephant in the room that we don't even have a slide for. What about all these scams, dude? What, what's the deal? Why, why are people using blockchain and cryptocurrency? And like, what, what do we do about that? Like, what, 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 what is yeah, your thoughts you you, on scams? You have to... Um, I think on YouTube, you can look at, um, just look at how to protect yourself, protect your wallets, your seed phrase, never give your, and if someone private messages you, it's usually a scam. If they're talking about anything blockchain or like crypto related, like, let me help you with this, or you won Bitcoin. If anyone tells you one Bitcoin, Ethereum, just pretty much it's a scam. And pretty much anyone, if you get on Discord and some of these platforms like Discord, it, it's just the wild west right now because um, USA and all these other countries are still haven't got a grasp on how to regulate this 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 like amazing platform and even so when they do regulate over. every industry has their idiots right yeah so, so it's we, still kind of a wild west early yeah. phase so then you just basically you're you're it's, it's almost like having control of your own bank and because of that like you hold the key and because you hold the key if someone tells you hey give me your key and you give it to them then you can't you can't just really find them or tell them hey give it back yeah, it's a little bit That's where we're at, right? riskier in that regard, but the upside is so, so amazing that it's worth at least dabbling and learning about, right? Yeah. Which is why we're all here. So this is good. All right. So we're on the right track, having a good conversation about blockchain, how it's affecting all these different industries, including marketing and people, people that haven't been in the space might be thinking, how in the world does this affect me and this? Well, we're trying to explain that. Like, just open up the box for you a little bit so you can go do some research yourself. And by the way, we're not financial advisors, but like we were talking about earlier, you might want to set aside a few bucks and go invest in something that you trust. It's got to be something you trust. Like you can't just some random, like Eric was saying, some random person DMs you or something like you don't, don't put money or time or anything into that. Go spend your resources on. Yeah. Look at the founders. Yeah. Look the at founders. Yeah. Look and make sure there is called docs in this world, crypto and NFTs. Make sure they're docs, which means like you know who they're they who they are. 
Have they proven themselves in business before? There's a lot of people who are anonymous who are just, you know, making money and then disappearing. So you do got to be careful, make sure it's a legit project um, you're getting behind. Cool. And that's why Bitcoin and Ethereum are the top two in all of, you know, like literally billions of dollars of throughput every single day. Um, even if some of the biggest banks are now buying and selling Bitcoin. I think at one time, uh, Tesla, you know, puts some of those reserves in Bitcoin to earn. So, I mean, it's Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think we're kind of going to that, but okay. Bitcoin cool. and Ethereum are the, the two biggest, uh, actually blockchains and cryptocurrencies. Um, and so they're they're kind of what they call more like stable coins, which obviously they haven't been as stable in the past, you know, ever since this kind of a crash that we've had. But we're kind of in a time where it's been a recession, even for the mar- stock market and even for crypto. So, but as far as the long, in the long term of life and what I'm betting on is really like um, the, the top two with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you really, to me, you can't go wrong. And if you're thinking long-term, if you're thinking like a short-term win, um, you know, it, it's really hard to predict that. But if you're looking at the next 10 years, um, I see Bitcoin and Ethereum being uh, pretty big. Yeah, we're going to be able to invest in sport, you know, sports teams and, you know, rather than just buying the ticket to like the Super Bowl, which would be cool for a short term experience, we're going to end up actually investing in events and teams and media. and Yeah, so that's going to be the future is, yeah, you're in the uh, Mark Cuban, billionaire Mark Cuban of the Dallas Mavericks. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, He's, you know, already looking into tickets and how to make, you know, Gary Vee sells his conference tickets with NFTs. And he gets literally thousands of people over there. He just had his event, uh, VCon. So, I mean, huge brands are literally going to be selling their tickets and NFTs, which is basically uh, cryptocurrency on the blockchain with a, you know, with a cool piece of art. So NFTs, the way I look at it is it's like, it's like owning a cryptocurrency, but you also get a cool piece of art or something to remember it by. It's like having those little like lanyard, like, oh, lanyard, I was at this, you know, and it has the cool colors and some plastic. It's like that, but NFTs are cooler to me. Yep, and, and they're uh, as rusty. And, you know. They're rare and provable, and just so so much tech, awesome technology behind it. Uh, it actually eliminates just as much of the scammers as it as it cre- as created. So, <laughs> so that's kind of yeah, fun. Exactly. All right, cool. So, uh, what do we? What, what's kind of some good practical next steps around blockchain? And you you just described NFTs. A lot of people are going to have questions about non fungible tokens. NFTs non-fungible tokens, right? They're going to have questions about that kind of stuff, but what's, what's a, what's a next step? Like, like we, we, we got into some deeper stuff. We're going to answer some questions in a minute, but like, what, what do we do? Like, this is great information, Eric, but what do we do? Yeah. So what I always do, and this is just, I don't know, like how my brain works. I'm a visual person. I just go to YouTube university at night sometimes. And I just like, you know, I, I like, what is DAO, D-A-O? What is uh, blockchain? And I watch these like amazing people who have those like animated videos showing what it is and, you know, like doing it. So I do that. And then also like I get in communities, I find a tribe, you know, um, I find communities and I ask questions. You ask questions, ask more questions, find some people who will kind of, um, you know, answer your questions, a community who's also learning and growing. And then it becomes fun because you're all learning together and growing together. So it's like this, you know, like a fun experience. So just get with other people who want to learn and also, um, yeah, just take some, you know, just like if you want to do anything, if you want to get a six pack, you know, I, a few times a week, I'm going to the gym or in my, you know, um, with someone motivate me, Hey, let's do some abs, you know? Love it. And then we also popped in that group, but let's go to the next slide, Eric. And let's just talk a little bit more about, um, uh, you know, you can join a tribe like kingdom warriors, give her marketing network. Some of these other, like, yeah, we're faith based, but we're we're serious about the technology. I mean, we know we know where we're going, right? So join join the Facebook groups that you're interested in. Uh, there's a uh, the Kingdom Warriors group is in a, in our chat box right now. It's it's basically you just look up the groups in Facebook and look up Kingdom Warriors NFT, and there it is, right? In fact, it's yeah. I think it's on the next slide too. You can bring that up, and then we can go into Q and A, Eric. And uh, we'd love yeah, to join this event and what you're going to get out of this event. And even in our guides, one, we have a free course primarily on NFTs and how we've raised um, over 350,000 in the past, um, basically the past like three or four months, but also just to see how, like how we, uh, what is NFTs? We actually have, uh, we licensed one of our friends, Web3 Simplified. So he actually does do the 
you know, the definitions, how it works visually and like very logically. I'm a visionary, so I like paint pictures and I, I see like the future and here's what's happening and here's what we're building. But uh, Sean, who we have a free course, he basically just paints it out like, what is the blockchain? And he like, so anyways, we have a free course in that, in this group. And also there's, we're giving away, um, we're giving away prizes like Blue Yeti mics, um, lighting kits. Um, we're actually even giving away NFTs. So you may be able to win some for free. And this this next session in, in the, we're like kind of like like rock right in the middle of a cha- a great challenge right now. The next session is literally in like twenty five minutes. So hey, as soon as we're done with our session, to, our master class today, just jump right into that Facebook group that's in. Bring it up right now. Click on it so you have it ready uh, up on your browser and get ready to jump in and have some fun. Join that group and have some fun. All right, Eric, let's do some Q and A. And I know that we have uh, a couple of really good questions. Herdy, what was that question you had? I'm trying to look for it. Oh, it was so good too. I just want to make sure I'm I'm seeing it. All right, so Elizabeth said, took Sean's course, fantastic for basic knowledge. Yeah, super good basic knowledge. I mean, just kind of knowing the foundations. Once you get the foundations, then it, um, I think he said, um, Herdy, oh, he has some more questions too. Oh yeah, Brave, Brave browser. I love Brave, and like that's this. Uh, and I love obviously you can see as our logo is like a lion. I love how they have a lion logo. I always support lion logo brands for some reason. But uh, Brave, yeah, they kind of like pay you in their uh, their token to to search the web. Like I, that's just yeah, super smart. Oh, I think he said, how do NFTs change ownership, or are you giving them access? Yeah, that one. That was uh, it. Yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah, that's a great question, Hardy. So, so it is there. It, it's basically the language and it's the discretion of the developers. The developers are basically like the founders of the project, as far as NFTs. And so, ownership, like for us, we kind of like we still have rights to um, to like obviously market market it as like, hey, we created that piece of art. So, like if you see behind on top of my face, like there's that's a that's one of our NFTs with green hair the fire sword that's one of our envoys um in our envoy guild in our um you know whole story behind our project anyways that uh for so if someone buys that they can now like they can create their own story and brand out of it and stuff but we also still are able to like share it or like you know be like hey we created that but um but yeah they but yeah the, while they have it they're able to at least for our project they're able to but like people like gary v gary v puts in his writing like um he puts in his writing, like, hey, this is all rights to me. You basically have, you're able to only sell it. Like, you're able to obviously own it and sell the, the thing, but basically all rights are Gary V's, which we are more like, hey, we're more for the people. Like, if someone buys one of our NFTs, they can create a story out of it. They can create a comic book out of it. Basically, like, they're buying a, a part of the, like, pretty much the IP to actually go and build something with it, their own story or their own comic book or their own, you know, series out of their NFT. So it's actually us. We're more empowering other people to write stories, to create stuff, um, you know, but in, and even Board Ape Yacht Club has modeled that really well. People in the Board Ape Yacht Club, those 300,000 are NFTs. They, um, people who own those are now licensing them out for deals. They're like, um, they're making their own uh, series out of their own NFTs. Some of the uh, Board Apes are even launching projects, like successful multi-million dollar projects that basically the storyline behind that project is this Board Ape created this dinosaur and this whole, like, it's called Metasaurs, and they basically, the Board Ape created the dinosaur, and then now the dinosaur, the Metasaur brand is like an extension of the Board Ape, and it it did really well. I got into that, man, and made some money, and um, anyways, yeah, the, there's a lot of, basically, it's called derivatives, so, like, you have something, and then it's a derivative of that that ends up launching onto its own thing. Val had a question about uh, blockchain uh, and software development, um, specifically when it comes to, like, business to business, collecting data like telephone numbers and names and all that good stuff uh have you have so you come all, across it's all on there so the thing with the blockchain is all the data not your email or your stuff but your all of your it's addresses so it's just a long streak of addresses which is your wallet but all the wallet data is out there but you it's not like you can't really buy or sell it potentially well people are actually making money off following the big whales wallets because you can you can track everyone's wallets. People are now like creating platforms where you can follow the investments that uh, big whale wallets are doing. And if you follow what the whales are doing, then they can, um, then you can basically, 
spend money like the whales are doing, obviously, with whatever you can afford. So there's people creating um, applications and websites around that and making money. So other, but other than that, yeah, it's decentralized and transparent. So you can see if you wanted to go to like EtherScan and look at these places where you can track all of it, it's just a whole bunch of information. And so it's like, you can go and look at it and try to, but there are things that you can do um, with that information, but it's, it, it's not like names, emails, and phone numbers. That's why it's kind of more like anonymous. Yeah, it would be like semi-anonymous, but highly trackable. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when you talk about like, whales, Eric, you're talking yeah. about large investors, people who investors, put a lot yeah. of, of, of money into uh, this space. Those are the people we want to kind of track where the flow of, of money is going. And um, I know we got to get you going here in about 10 minutes. So let's answer a couple more questions. Uh, do you give up ownership of your NFT uh, when you're when you uh, when you're renting it? specifically like how does that work um no so you still own it so like on some of the play to earn games where you can rent it out so basically like there's like a contract and that's what's so cool about the blockchain is there's 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 these things called smart contracts which are like written contracts like hey timothy and i we're going to share this 50 percent. but you, it's a smart contract that's on the blockchain that says hey when you're using my nft i'm the owner but while you're using it and we're in this contract together smart contract on the blockchain we share 50 percent, and you play the game and i just own the nft and you could share the crypto proceeds um that's a really good question then do you pay mining fees uh you don't pay mining fees i guess you kind of pay it to the miners but you pay um yeah transaction fees whenever you do stuff on the blockchain bitcoin ethereum and that that's kind of like the what they're trying to work on is they're trying to work on basically um where you can do higher throughput on the blockchain internationally because so many people are on the blockchain moving and transferring and um, moving and shaking on there but then also making it to where it's just less fees you know so that's really that's one of the solutions um that are uh that is even out there for people who you know want to figure that out like hey i'm a coder i need to figure out how to i mean there's so much work even for developers um like think about this from a marketing agency i mean there's ways you can just outsource if you like if you you can even just you know, like one of the things I did in a uh, marketing agency, obviously like I'll land a contract and I'll go find people to help do that. So there's going to be a huge demand for developers on with smart contracts and knowing some of this technology. So if you can land contracts with Adidas or whatever, Microsoft or whoever, and then you just get it, find a team of people who can help uh, fulfill. And then uh, even, an, a, even a local that. sports team or a, a local project or a, a, a real estate developer or like any, even local, right, Eric? I mean, we think mm -hmm. big, right? But but even yeah. some, some, oh, some yeah, of the, local, yeah. Yeah, you could, I mean, I'm talking to real Your estate. local title companies. Title like, companies, If yeah. you have a local big title company, you can say, hey, we should start looking at the blockchain. Like I can, you know, I could find you some developers who can at least start helping you build some applications or whatever. I mean, there's so much, there's so much potential even for that as like agencies or marketing professionals. Yep. Love it. Love it. What about, um, okay. So Grace is talk, asking a question about derivatives, brand and money specifically around derivatives. Yeah. So derivatives, people only do derivatives off of successful projects. So they look at like the top 100 on OpenSea and then they derive from a really successful project. And, um, and like, so it's only if they let you like, you know, do a derivative. Some people do a derivative project, like basically like here's the board ape. Like basically everyone copies Board Ape Yacht Club because it's like the one big one, Steph Curry, Jimmy Fallon, all the, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, all the celebrities and all of culture, popular culture is like, like Board Ape Yacht Club. It's, it's like basically like the richest of the rich. Like you can, it's a the status. Originals. They're the originals. So like, yeah. yeah, why not? And it's, a, it's like owning, it's like owning a yacht right now because, or like owning a Rolex. Like you all, you know, if you own a Rolex, you at least have like what, 50,000 or something like so basically, if you have a board a yacht club, it's like, wow, you at least have $300,000 asset that you could liquidate. So it's almost like a status symbol at this point, like wearing a brand, like it says, people will just have an iPhone watch and they'll have it there. Um, like I'm going to NFT NY um, at the, later in a couple of weeks. And like, they'll just have their uh, their picture on their thing. Basically like, hey, they have a you know 200 or $1,000 watch, but then they have $300,000 uh, NFT like plugged in their watch. And like, that's like what it's like for them. It's like, it's like a whole branding piece. So I, anyways, so it humans are silly. We're, yeah. we're silly humans, aren't we? We love it. We love this stuff. <laughs> exactly. So it's fun. just funny. <laughs> but yeah, it's just brand. Yeah, it's just brand and like creating brands and, you know, marketing. 
marketing and branding is just all about having something cool that uh, other people want to be a part of, which people want to be associated with Board Yacht Ape Club because then they're like, oh, I'm a part of that club, you know. Eric, I know some of us are thinking the same thing. Like, what the heck? A picture of an ape? Are you kidding me? Like, it's worth million yeah. dollars plus? And these collection of, monta you know, these collections of art are worth $69 million at one point it got sold for or whatever. Yeah, it's like, crazy. you know what, ladies and gentlemen, let's just speak real right now. Value is derived by how much somebody's willing to pay for something, period. Either in time or money or resources of some kind. That's where value is derived. So this is a whole new world where our minds are going to be expanded around money, talent, creative expression, assets of all kinds, like value is derived in many different ways. But at the end of the day, it's probably not worth as much as you think it is unless somebody else is willing to pay for it. And sometimes yeah. we're holding gold in our hands and we don't even realize it. I got some NFTs from Kingdom Warriors. I'm looking at this, I'm going, those are cool. But then I go on OpenSea and I go, oh, those are really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kingdom Warriors, for letting me in the front door so we could hang out together. Like, I would highly recommend just dabbling just to see what the actual progression of the value mindset, what it actually does. I'm a big fan of barter and trade and exchange of value. This is a great way to explore that on the edges and have some fun with it because it's becoming more mainstream, right? So many more people are going to start asking you questions like, oh, you, you know about blockchain or, oh, I don't know how many conversations we've, I, I, we're working with Kingdom Warriors today because I was talking about blockchain and crypto with a friend of mine. And there you go. Here we go. That's how Nick got involved in the project. Oh my gosh. And then God just does the rest, right? It just, it just coordinates everything. So super fun to, to be a part of this. And uh, Christine, can you pop that link into the, um, cause we're going into a session right now, Eric. I mean, we're going right into another yeah. one. So I got I to gotta let you go, but man, um, uh, we'll, we'll see you in the group, okay? So we'll definitely be tuning in. We'll click on that link, kind of follow your, your actual ho Hollywood to Hollywood five-day challenge that we're kind of in the middle of. A lot of goodies about to come. I know I know your challenges are full. I know our challenges are full of goodies. So, so here we go. So that'll be good. Any, any last words, Eric, before we, we let you go? Yeah, just, um, yeah, good just get your feet wet, you know, join the group and um, just have fun with it. It's a really fun space. There's a lot of positive people in the NFT space and the crypto space. Find good, um, you know, like good people like Timothy, like our groups. Timothy is a part of our, even our team helping us with, you know, the marketing side of it. And so just, um, you know, there's, it's a lot of fun and you just want to do stuff with the right people to really learn and, and engage and um, grow in the space it's not going anywhere. It's going to be in every industry. Um, and so like, even for like coaches and consultants, you know, I believe that this is going to be huge for uh, like coaching programs and people are going to now be able to like buy NFTs for coaching programs. And then the cool thing for the consumer, and then here's why I think it will be so big is because for the consumer, people usually buy, get a part of a coaching program or get a part of a course that has some coaching with a course and they're never able to re resell the course or get a you know refund. But what if they had a coaching program with a course and then they got all the value out of it and then they're able to resell it? Now that's better for the consumer. So this is why I feel like the things that are better for the consumer always end up winning. This is why this is going to be big and even the coaching space. So most a lot, of, marketing a lot people, of double and triple wins, right, Eric? I love it. I love that's how kingdom is. It's all double, triple, quadruple wins everywhere. That's how it works. So I love, love your, your work. Proud to be locked arms with you, brother, and working together. And thanks for taking some time. I know you got to bounce. I'll, I'm, uh, Christine and I are going to stick around for any more questions, maybe awesome. about the group or anything like that. But thank you, Eric. Really appreciate you taking some time for us. Really appreciate that. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you in the group. All right. So we got a couple more minutes. Uh, if if everybody's asked their questions, then we're good. We can we can go. But I do want to make sure that if anybody has any unanswered questions about reselling, about cryptocurrency, where do I start? How do I buy um, anything related to the blockchain? Where do you recommend starting? Like all these kind of things. Obviously we're gonna jump into a, a group here in a few minutes, but any, any other questions, just raise your hand or put it in the chat box. And I'm glad, glad to be able to at least do my best on this, okay? Good, good, good. 
love the uh, love the resell course idea grace is saying i'm seeing some chatter in the chat box all right ladies and gentlemen we will see you in the group in 10 minutes uh, now would be a good time for a little break grab some water grab some snacks whatever and buckle up because these challenges are insane there's guests from all over the world uh, from hollywood from the arts and entertainment world and it's super fun i'm gonna i'm gonna sign in myself and, and kind of follow along and and, and light it up in the Facebook chat, uh, chat box uh, for the group. So we'll see you guys there. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.